And I'm going to read to you today uh, a short portion of scripture from Genesis, the 45th chapter. And beginning with verse 4. It says, And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near. And he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years into which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by great deliverance. And so it was not you that sent me, but God. Would you bow with me for prayer? Father, we thank you for the confidence in knowing that we are here today because you sent us. You brought us. Thank you for the confidence of knowing that you are here with us even now to speak to us and to help us and to give us direction and to extend your grace to us and we thank you for that. We ask that you bless our time together. Help me to bring the word that you've given me. Help the hearers to hear and to receive and help us all just to act accordingly in faith. May your work and your will be done in all of our lives. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And you can be seated. I titled today's message, Living the Dream. Living the Dream. No doubt everybody here has heard the story of Joseph. Joseph was the favorite son of the patriarch Jacob. And his jealous brothers, if you remember, they, they were so jealous of him and so hateful toward him, they started to kill him, but instead they sold him into slavery into Egypt. And soon after that, he found himself incarcerated. But then after he correctly interpreted the dreams of the king, Pharaoh, he was raised to second in command in Egypt and he saves Egypt and his family during a severe famine. So much of the story of Joseph's life has valuable lessons for God's people. I don't know if you ever think about it or not, but in some ways our lives offer lessons to other people. Lessons of things that we need to be doing. Maybe lessons about things that we need to avoid at all costs. But uh, Joseph was known as a dreamer. As a child, he dreamed a dream that shaped his life. And ultimately, it shaped the lives of his family and the whole region of which he lived. The story of Joseph's life, it was what uh, people that study the Bible call a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. Now, God gave us a lot of types and shadows in the Word. A, a type and shadow is a reference to a story or a person or a situation that parallels or points to another and it helps us to understand its significance. That's what a type and shadow is all about. So, listen to this and you'll pick right up on the type and shadow. Joseph was the favored son of his father. Joseph 
at an early age was given a divine revelation of his destiny and his life lined up with it. Joseph's life had a direct impact on his family and on others. People around Joseph could not help but conclude that God's hand was on this young man because miracles characterized his life. Can you see how Joseph was a type and shadow of Jesus Christ? Now I want us to take it a step further. Joseph's life and the life of Jesus are types and shadows of God's will for my life and yours. You don't think that God put all these stories in the Bible just for historical content or entertainment purposes, do you? I mean, from Adam and Eve in the garden to the beggar Lazarus in heaven, it was written to help us see ourselves as we are and as God, by His mercy through Christ, created us to be. 1 Corinthians says that the word was, these stories were written for our examples. In other words, types and shadows. So, I said earlier, we're calling this message, Living the Dream. That's a saying that we hear often these days. Me and my buddy Dakota greet each other with that. Living the dream, that's what we're doing. But many times... People say they're living the dream with a serious hint of sarcasm because they really feel that their life is anything but a dream life. I saw some guy said he was living the dream one nightmare at a time. No doubt much of that is true because a lot of people are pursuing the wrong dream for their life. I wonder, do you ever dream a dream? I mean, we're talking about just when you're sleeping at night. Uh, you ever dream a dream and the next morning you try to figure out, why did I dream such a dream? What in the world was that all about? What in my life has happened to trigger such a subconscious and involuntary experience? I mean, there ain't much you can do about dreams when you're sleeping, you know. You, you don't have much control over them until they're over with. Sometimes I'll repent of mine anyway. I said, God, you know I didn't have nothing to do with that, but I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, now, y'all been there. You know what I'm talking about. Sometimes you dream a dream and you, you wake up and you say, what am I supposed to do with that? I don't know about you, but sometimes what I decide I'm going to do about it, just forget about it just quick as I can. But sometimes you wonder, do I need to ask God for some revelation about that dream? Sometimes you wake up and you feel like, well, I just need to repent. I mean, God's waking me up, showing me something here that I need to get corrected. I just need to repent. Uh, sometimes we wonder, was that given to me because I need to adjust my plans that I'm making or the course of action? Was it a warning? Or was it instruction? How about this one? Did I just eat too much pizza or did I watch too much TV last night? Is that where that came from? Yeah. 
But now we're talking about dreaming when we're asleep. But at this point going forward, we're going to, I want to talk to you about a dream in the sense of a, having a revelation from God because Joseph had that. Our reference to a dream from here on is not going to involve being asleep, but it's going to involve us being awake and in tune and sensitive to the working of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And I hope, like me, you're all believing God and asking God and expecting God to be doing a lot of that in your life because we need His guidance, we need His wisdom, we need His revelation. He said that he would lead us, amen? And a dream in the sense that we're talking about here is a plan, it's a vision, it is a purposeful direction or a goal, a life goal. Now the Bible tells us that Joseph had a dream like this at a very young age. He knew from a child who he was. And what his mission and what his purpose on the earth was. Now so did Jesus, we're told. So I got a very important question for you today. Do you have a dream of who God called you to be? You know what, to me it's a sad thing because I observe a lot of people, it seems like they're just going through life and we're just getting through the day. We're just getting through the week. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, uh, I told the praise team, you know, that we're, we're going to be doing some worship on Wednesday night. And they said, well, well what songs are we going to do? And I said, I don't know, that's as far as I know right now. I, I, I don't know. I don't have it, I don't, I'm not, the plan isn't developed that far. A lot of people live their whole life that way. They're just going to work every day, beating it in until hopefully Friday will hurry up and come and I get that check and then I'm going to do the same thing this weekend that I did last weekend and, you know, it's just same thing, same thing, same thing. They don't really, there's not a purpose and a plan associated with where they're going. So they never know if they're where they're supposed to be. Y'all riding along? So I'm telling you, you need to know who God has called you to be. And He will show you. I'll promise you, he is just waiting for you to desire that enough that he can make it clear to you. And I'll go so far as to say this. As a Christian, you will never be very fruitful or effective until that bridge has been crossed. Y'all thinking? Ain't nobody dreaming. You see, if you're truly going to be who God created you to be, you understand something very important today. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. If you are going to be who God created you to be and fulfill the purpose and the destiny that God created you for, here's something you understand. You don't get to choose that. I don't care what any of the new age logic and higher education and everything else in this world is saying there's some things you do not get to choose in life you didn't have anything to do with when you showed up I was born in 1953 but I couldn't I couldn't say oh wait I want to wait till I want to wait a little bit later no. God figured the world was ready for Steve Willis at 1953. I didn't get to choose whether I was going to be a boy, a girl, a man, or a woman. God already determined that. It'd be foolish for me to think that I'm going to do, you know, 
successfully and be happy to do anything about that. I am who I am and you are who you are. We are who God created us to be. And the happier we'll be is when we say, God, I just want to simplify things. I just want you to help me discern who you created me to be, who you called me to be, what my plan is, so I can cooperate with you. Amen? It's the only way we can really live the dream. I hope today that you have had a revelation that the only dream that really offers a dream life for you is the one that God has for you. All the others, I'll promise you this, they're empty. All the others are full of frustration. All the others are full of disappointment. But you can rest assured of this. His dream for you is only good. It's only good all the time. And so, here's something that I just really wish all God's people would, would get a hold of. In order to live the dream, first of all, you must believe the dream and embrace it. What are you talking about, Pastor? Well, you know, whenever the Word tells us that if we're in Christ, we're a new creation, old things are passed away, behold, all things are brand new. Whenever the Word tells us that Jesus in us, that He will, he will guide us and direct us and He'll give us the words that we need at the right time and, and you know, He wants to work in, in our lives, we've got to believe that. I, I, I think a lot of Christians just doubt that. Well, I know that's what, it said, that's what it said in the Bible, but man, it sure don't seem to be working out in my life. Well, you haven't embraced it, honey. You haven't embraced you, you got to believe it, and you've got to embrace what he said, who he said. Joseph, at a young age, he embraced the dream so much so he was talking to other people about it. He was confessing it, which that's another pretty key thing too. We used to sing a song, we're the people of God. Called by his name. Called from the dark and delivered from shame. One holy race Saints, everyone, because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we are the people of God. Listen, you got to believe the dream and embrace the dream. You're not just anybody out here in the world. You are a child of God. You're in this world, but you're not of this world. You got to know that. You got to live like that. Jesus was our example. He was type and shadow. He was the second Adam. Which is a type and shadow of the blood washed child of God. He was the light of the world. But then he said now you are the light of the world. You got to believe it. You got to embrace it. If you're going to shine, you've got to embrace the dream. He said, we are the salt of the earth. People going around talking about it all the time. Oh, I can't believe the shape this world's in. I declare I never seen I thought I'd see it like this. It's, it's just getting worse all the time. Going to hell in a handbasket. You're the salt of the earth. Why ain't you seasoning things a little more? Preserving things a little bit more. We've got to embrace the dream. If we're going to live the dream, there are some things that we've got to understand 
just get an understanding of and prepare for. I'm going to talk to you about them today. The first one is we got to live it when others don't believe it. If we're going to live the dream, we got to live it when others don't believe it. Joseph's brother didn't believe in his dream. They mocked him. People in Jesus' time didn't believe he was the son of God. Remember, those guys are type and shadow of who you are. People may not believe your dream. Watch this. The doubters are often the ones that are the closest to you. I remember when I first got saved, some of the people had the hardest time. Some of the hardest time accepting the change in my life were the ones that I'd spent the most time with. They loved, they loved to get me in public, especially after I said I was called to preach. I can think of one guy in particular. He, he, he loved to catch me in a crowd, and then he would say something about, you know, uh, what I was doing these days and then he would make reference to some of the things that weren't so Christian that he'd seen me do I said yeah that was me that was BC that was before Christ I'm different now you've got to hold fast to the dream that God gives you regardless of what other people think or say it's understand it is a God given dream Others may not believe it. They may doubt it. They may mock you. But God will honor you if you believe the dream. Second thing is, if we're going to live the dream, we've got to live it when those you love betray you. Joseph's brothers hated him because of the dream. They were about to kill him. But they saw an opportunity to sell him out as a slave, and that's what they did. They just wanted Joseph out of their sight. How many of you know that some people are jealous of you when you're living the dream? When you seem to be getting your life together when it hasn't been. When you seem to be doing better than they've ever seen you before. They're jealous of that, whether they would admit it or not. Some wanted to complicate or hinder the dream. There's some folks that was going to want to complicate or hinder the dream that God's given you, but you've got to believe it, and you've got to live it even when those you love betray you. Living the dream will sometimes... Cause you some pain. Not everyone is willing to pay the price for your prize. You've got to be committed to the dream for the long haul. I want to know today how many in here are committed for the long haul. You see, you've got to understand, some people will betray you. Some people are only along to play a very small part of your dream. Some folks, only walk, they only want to walk beside you and be a part of your life during the best of times, but not the difficult times. As long as they're walking with you and it's, you know, there's, there's, there's some ulterior motive for it to be, make things a little nicer and a little more appealing to them, they're all tight. But when things get difficult, you see, some want to walk with you as long as your dream benefits them, but not if it requires anything of them. Listen to me. Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. But some of his people will. That's the truth. 
We, we don't even want to talk about it. We don't want to think about it. But I said, Jesus will never leave you, but some of his people will. For no apparent reason. Some hearts have never been with you in the first place. But you better not let that change your heart toward your dream or toward them. You got to live the dream even when the devil lays a trap for you. Especially young Christians, I want you to listen up. The devil will lay a trap for you to shipwreck your dream. Your God is working to bring every piece of that dream into place. But there is an enemy at work that wants to derail your destiny. You better hold to your dream closer than anything else in this life. The enemy will try to lay a snare for you, but if you'll be discerning, God will show you the trap and provide a way out for you. You better understand that everything that glitters is not gold. Everything that seems to be good is not of God. In the first part of the Bible we read about Eve and Adam and Eve and, and how the enemy laid a snare and the scripture says that the woman saw the tree here's what it says she saw and I underlined this phrase it was good for food and then it says it was pleasant to the eyes and it was a tree to be desired. Boy, all that sounds pretty good, don't it? Man, the enemy can make things look really good for you. In Joseph's life, Pharaoh's wife came on to Joseph in the privacy of her house. But Joseph realized that God had given him a dream that she was not a part of. When the temptation is strong, your dream's got to be stronger. When the temptation is strong, your dream and your God must be stronger. If you're going to live the dream, you've got to live it when it looks like it's not working. You might be here today and you might be trying to serve God and follow His plan and you thought you knew what His plan was, but somehow it just don't seem like things are falling in place like they ought to fall in place, like you thought they was just going to be like boom, 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 and just step by step it was going to be there. Can you imagine being sold as a slave? Then being elevated to the second in command of the king's affairs. And then being thrown in jail and forgotten. There seemed to be a lot of up and down in Joseph's life before it all came to fulfillment. I said, you got to live the dream when it looks like it's not working. Do you think he may have been tempted to think, I must have missed God somewhere. You know, I remember a time in my life as a pastor when it just didn't look like things were... I, I could not imagine that what was going on in my life and Sheila's life and, and in our ministry, I could not imagine that 
It was God's plan and the dream that he had for us. And I became very discouraged. Sometimes it just looks that way. I, was, I began to question, did I miss God? Did I think I heard God? Did I think I understood the dream? But I was just being presumptuous. Did I just think what I, what I thought was God's plan was not right? But in all the story of Joseph, in all the story of Jesus Christ also, you never once saw Joseph stop being used of God. Never once did you fail to see the evidence that God's hand was still on him and he was being used of God right where he was. So when you are somewhere you never intended to be or somewhere you never envisioned yourself for being, I want to encourage you, keep living the dream. Keep looking for ways for God to use you. The dream is still valid. And God's word says that his gifts and his callings are without repentance. In other words, he doesn't give them out carelessly. He doesn't toy with us. He don't, he don't bait us out there and then pull it back. He doesn't remove it. Never once did you see Joseph begin to talk foolishly and confess anything but faith in his God and who, he's, who he was. I remember another story about some boys that had a dream. Those Hebrew boys that were facing the fiery furnace Here's what they said. They were, they, were, they were living their dream when it didn't look like it, it, was, it was working out. They said, oh king, you may throw us in that fiery furnace. But one thing I want to tell you, my God is able to deliver us. And he will deliver us out of your hand, oh king. We will not bow to your images. I remember another man named Job. That was living the dream, but there was a season when it looked like everything was just not, it was going the wrong way. It was going backwards. It just wasn't panning out. His wife said, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? It's just not working out. And he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. God was about to turn his situation around. It may look like to you that your dream is not coming to fulfillment. Understand something. If it's God's dream and he gave it to you, he's going to turn it around. He's going to turn it around. I said he's going to turn it around for you. In the hardest of times when you're walking by faith, and not by sight. Keep living the dream. Live it in the very face of everything that tries to evidence against it. Many times it seems that things are not working. But that's when God is about to turn your situation around. And so... The last part of this, I want to encourage you to live the dream when God's hand is mighty upon you. Can you imagine what it was like for Joseph when God brought him out of the darkest of times onto the center of stage of what was happening in the world? He was brought into the king's palace and the king was interested and what he had to say, the king was interested in what he had to say. The king may have even been desperate to hear what he had to say. You see, the king had had some dreams. 
And the king knew that they were significant, but he then called in all the experts and nobody could tell him what those dreams meant. But somebody told the king that he knew a young man that specialized in dreams. The timing and the circumstances had never been right before. But now, Pharaoh was able to hear God in Joseph's interpretation of his dream. The timing seemed like it had never been right before, but now his brothers were even able to hear and receive his interpretation of the dream. Joseph was elevated to the very place God had showed him when he was a boy. And now, Joseph was truly, in fact, you guys writing the scriptures down there? Is that what you're doing? Writing the scripture reference? At this time, Joseph was really living the dream now. I don't know about you, but I believe that God is about to bring his people out to the front and use them like we've never seen them used before in these last days. But I've got to ask you this question. Are you living the dream? Are you living the dream? Have you believed the dream? Have you embraced the dream for yourself? And are you living the dream? There's nothing like it, folks. It's the only life for the believer. Is to carry out God's will and to live the dream. I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet with me. Would you just bow your heads with me, please? Father, we thank you today that we understand that we're not here by accident. And this is not just another day. It's not just another holiday weekend. It's not just another Sunday that we come to church and go home and do the same thing and feel the same way and respond the same way. But Lord, we understand that we're a people of destiny. And we want to fulfill that destiny. Lord, for every person in this house today, I pray that you'd give them understanding and insight and revelation in who you created them to be. Will you join me and just believe in God for that? God, every person here is a special person in your kingdom. In the providence of God, every person here, you have invested and vested with gifts and callings and talents and abilities. Every person here, God. Lord, show us what to do with it. Show us, God, what to do with it. Burn it into our spirit like you did young Joseph at an early age that he just knew. He just knew that in your time you were going to use him significantly. Burn it in our spirit like you did your son Jesus. Who knew before the foundation of the world. Lord help us not to waste our days. In idle things and. 
in temporal things. Help us not to fall for the snares that the enemy lays to distract us and to pull us away from focus on the eternal things. But God, today, deal with our hearts and reveal to us and continue to reveal to us who we are in you what you want us to do and help us Lord to hold that dream close to our hearts speak to hearts here today God help us to embrace the dream We thank you for it in Jesus' name. While heads are bowed, please. Eyes are closed. It's possible that you're here today. You've not surrendered your life to Jesus. You know you need him. You know that he is ex- expressing his love to you. He's showing you that he loves you and he has a plan for you and, and his plan is better than the one you've been operating in but you just haven't invited him in. You haven't opened your heart. You haven't said, Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I confess that I need you and I want you in my life and you welcome him in. If that's you today, I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord. You don't have to do one thing except simply call upon His name and in sincerity ask Him to forgive your sins and to come into your heart and be your Savior and be your Lord. If you're here today, And you need to pray that prayer. Holy Spirit is convincing you right now that it's something you need to do. I want to encourage you to do it as we pray. We're going to pray. We're going to pray the sinner's prayer. I'm going to lead it. Everybody in here that will is going to pray it. Some, many have already prayed it. But we're all going to pray it together just to make it easier for you to do the right thing. And we can't do it for you. And our prayer won't fix it for you. But God's looking at your heart. And if you pray it and you mean it, He will come into your life. And He will make all the difference in the world. So I'm going to start to pray again. And at one point I'm going to stop. And I'm going to ask you to repeat a prayer after me. Father, I thank you today for everybody here. I thank you that you're moving in our midst today. I thank you that your Holy Spirit is doing his job. I thank you that the Word is doing its job. You said that we could only come to you if the Holy Spirit, if the Father draws us. Lord, you're drawing us today. And I pray for every person that has not received you as Savior and Lord, that today they would open their hearts and say yes to you, to welcome you in. Cause faith to arise as we pray. And we thank you. Repeat the prayer after me, please. Heavenly Father, I come to you today in Jesus' name. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending Jesus to die in my place. I recognize today that I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. But I ask you to save me. Forgive my sins. Come into my heart. And from this day forward, 
help me to live the dream. I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.